Uh, my name is Derek Yarnell and I've been a master gardener for a few years now and you know the area of study for me that I've really been focused on in my continuing gardening education is around gardening and sustainability. I really started looking at how I can garden and my gardening practices can help those issues. I've decided to turn my lawn into gardens and remove uh, my lawn every year a little bit more, although last year was a lot rather than just a little bit more. And there's about 800 square feet of new garden beds behind me that are going to be more or less native plants. So probably 80 to 90% native plants in order to create more habitat for wildlife and make it more beautiful as well. We first moved here in November of 2012, and uh, right away I did some lasagna gardens to get rid of lots of grass and put in some new beds. I was very excited to have this amount of space. I would say in the time that I've been gardening here over um, you know almost 10 years, my style has changed in that I've become more aware of ecological gardening and the importance of native plants and the amazing power that gardeners have to make a change in the world, whether that's using native plants or other pollinator-friendly plants or what have you, but there's lots of opportunity for gardeners to make a change in the world, and that's something that's relatively new for me in the last couple of years. We did a garden tour this year that was really different than any tour that I've been a part of before or heard of, because what I really want to do is role model the inclusion of native plants into our urban and suburban settings. So you can see, Right, anytime we put in a bed this big, you're just asking for the weeds to come in. So instead of trying to get all the weeds out, I'm only pulling the ones that are really encroaching on the plants that I've planted. And part of the reason is I came out one day and the rabbits are sitting in here as they are every day, but it was eating the plantain. And I thought, if I get rid of all of the weeds other than the plants that I want to have in here, then the only thing the rabbits have to eat are the plants that I'm trying to grow in here. So in this area, there's transitions between three primary different kinds of plants. The Bishop's Gout Weed, which is non-native, super aggressive. The False Solomon Seal, which is the native plant close to the front border here. And uh, because it is already starting to turn brown and doesn't last as late into the season, before I had sort of my epiphany on the value of native plants, uh, we were intentionally getting rid of that plant based purely on aesthetics and now I'm doing the reverse. So I'm just going to go in and here I can see that there's the star flowered Solomon seal which is the native and it's surrounded by a ton of lily of the valley. So out the lily of the valley comes, lickety split. I'm not worried about the roots because that is just you know a ton of work to try and actually get these out by the roots. A ton of time commitment but it can be enough um, and make enough of a difference to just favor one over the other. When I first moved here, actually, um, I did try planting some native plants because I'd heard rumblings about their value. And I thought, okay, there's some value, but let's be honest, they're not always as beautiful as the non-natives because the non-natives have been hybridized for <laughs> and hybridized and hybridized. And people have said, we want to accentuate the color or the height or whatever aspect the hybridizer's chosen. And so you get these amazing looking plants, um, but sometimes it's been at the expense of the amount of nectar that they have or the bee's ability to climb inside the plant because it's physically altered. And for that reason, I thought, well, I'd like some native plants, but I don't want to sacrifice the aesthetics and now my view of the world has totally changed. So I find it really exciting this year that I introduced goldenrod because for me it is really emblematic of the shift that I've done mentally to embrace native plants because I always thought goldenrod is just a plant that grows in the ditch and honestly my gardens deserved better than just plants from the ditch but now my mind's totally changed and I love it. And so I'm going to either add more goldenrod here or some yarrow. Good evening, my fellow TikTok gardeners. I know the other day I said that last weekend was my last weekend for transplanting to make There sure seems to be an appetite for people who want to understand not only how they can garden better, but also non-gardeners who want to understand 
things that they can do to help save the planet, and that's what's driving them to become interested in gardening. I've got a thought on something you can do to help with climate anxiety, and for anyone else watching this, the same thing. It's certainly something that's worked well for me. And it's planting native plants. It may sound overly simple, but by planting native plants, you're really creating the foundation for your local ecology. And once you do that, you start to see more insects. And when you see more insects, you see more invertebrates and you see more moss and butterflies. And when you see more of those, you see more birds and you really get a firsthand feedback loop. And you can join the movement of people rewilding North America in our suburban and urban spaces by adding native plants. And by the way, none of these hydrangeas behind me are native plants, which just goes to show it doesn't have to be an all or nothing solution. Every little bit helps just do a few plants and you'll make a difference. The first milestone I'll celebrate is 70% pollinator friendly and native plants together. That combination I'll be happy with that 70% because I can still support uh, very well communities of moths and butterflies. But then in my recent course that I'm studying through Ryerson University on ecological resilient plant design, they described ecological gardening as using 70% native plants. So now I've got one milestone, which will be 70% pollinator friendly. And then once I reach that, I'll probably then decide to go for 70% native plants. And we're talking years for sure. tall purple plant is an annual verbena and I've put an annual in here because the culver's root which is the perennial that I planted in here and I'm head over heels in love with especially I've got culver's root in three different shades of purpley pink in here but in year one they're only growing a foot tall whereas next year they'll be three to four feet tall and it'll be much more dense so I knew I wanted to interplant uh, with some annuals this year just to give it some height and color while it was settling in. But this annual is amazing because not only do the deer and the rabbits leave it alone, it smells great and the pollinators love it. So these are autumn oxide daisy or giant daisy and they're you know an asiatic european import and so i wasn't sure whether i wanted to keep them or not and they only bloom this late in the season and sometimes they don't even bloom at all before the snow falls but this year we're getting quite a show and so this is my first year really evaluating and paying close attention to a lot of my plants to see how pollinators are interacting with them so i am very happy to report that the pollinators like these plants so i'm not looking to get rid of plants uh, from my yard if they are playing a role ecologically and so i'm really just discovering in the last week or so that the bees do like these plants and that they're safe, which is just wonderful. The reason I'm so concerned about insect populations as we see these massive declines is that insects play this amazing role, which is they are the ones who, generally speaking, convert the energy that the plants photosynthesize from the sun and they put that into the rest of the food web. So if the insects go, uh, we're all in trouble. I used to have, let's say, some angst about our environmental crisis and the biodiversity crisis. And by refocusing my volunteer activities and my energy into sustainable gardening, that angst has gone away. There's so little that we can do to make a difference in this world that provides that feedback loop. I recycle, but I don't. Uh, see a difference <laughs> if I put my orange juice container in the recycle maybe it makes me feel good but I don't really see the benefit otherwise when I choose a native plant and I put it in my yard the bees come when I uh, planted dill and parsley specifically because I wanted habitat for swallowtail butterflies I had swallowtail butterflies in my yard this summer after I planted them it's quite something If you provide habitat by, through your plant selection, nature's just amazing that way and it shows up. Build it and, and they will come. It's incredible to have now the empowering knowledge that the difference I can make is substantial and it's real.